Hi, this is Reverb Audio and we are continuing pre-amplifier week. And uh, I was asked a very interesting question to talk about OTL preamplifiers. So <laughs> first when I read it, I thought that it's some kind of a joke because uh, almost every preamplifier is by definition OTL. And, uh, and that's because there's no output transformer. OTL means output transformer less. And when you look at preamps, two preamps, uh, vacuum tube preamps, 99.9% uh, .9 of them does not have an output transformer. So the OTL is something meaningful, meaningful for power amplifiers, because tube power amplifiers, by definition, have an output transformer, and, and adding the words OTL means that they do not use output transformers, they do the impedance matching in a very different way, and that makes them special. But for preamplifiers, uh, having them OTL, that's by default. So adding OTL uh, before preamp, that's uh, kind of like a four, four wheel car. It's like advertising a car as being special by having four wheels. Nevertheless, I did a, a, a Google search, a quick Google search on the subject, and and to my great astonishment, I really uh, found uh, that there are that, that this thing is not a joke, and uh, there is OTL uh, preamplifier which is actually advertised as OTL, and it's made by Alnik, which is a really um, uh, favored company these days. A lot of people have very good ideas about it, or at least it has a lot of uh, very positive uh, reviews going on. However, as you say here, it says OTL OCL. Now we are talking. Now it makes something special. However, uh, they should just call it OCL, which means output capacitor less. Now, this is something really special because just about every uh, tube preamplifier requires capacitors to remove the DC from the output. And if you don't want to use capacitors, then you can use an output transformer. And what makes this unit very special is that it's not that it doesn't have an output transformer. It's like saying that this car is very special because it has four wheels. Um, I think they just add this extra OTL word because uh, half-baked audiophiles already know that OTL amplifiers are a special breed of tube amplifiers. So then let's use it for preamps as well, That let's hype it up even more. But <laughs> if you know a little bit about uh, preamplifier design, you know it's, it's, uh, it, it has as much value added to uh, the statement as adding four wheels to a personal vehicle. However, OCL is, is, is important, as we said, and it means there is no output capacitor. Uh, so if it was my product, if I made any products, I would just said OCL and not put the word OTL there uh, to, to be fair and square, but the word OTL is here and it's at the first position, not even in the second position. So it's clearly a big marketing hype. But let's just discount the marketing hype and uh, let's forget about the marketing department and let's look at the content, what's inside and what makes this unit OCL, output capacitor less. So let's just look a little bit about it, what it says. It's a direct coupled amplifier, so it means there's no capacitor in the signal path. Uh, also, direct coupling means that it has multiple uh, tube stages inside, and it has uh, two SEPP 12B4s output. What on earth does this mean? 12B4, that's the tube. Actually, it, it's called 12B4A. There's no version without the A. And, uh, and that's, that's a, a, a very compact uh, little triode uh, that has a pretty low uh, plate impedance and it's 
quite high current for being such a small tube and it's being used by DIY uh, audiophiles uh, throughout the world and it's, 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 it's a very mighty strong little very uh, competent little triode and it's, it's one of the hidden gems that uh, mainstream uh, industry has not really uh, discovered yet but as we see now uh, I think this is the first uh, commercial unit I see this little triode which is a fantastic triode uh, being used here and now one of the main reasons here it's it's a great tube and the second reason it's dirt cheap because it has not been discovered yet by the guitar amp manufacturers and nor by the uh, commercial guys and that's why the prices are not driven up to the sky yet but now that we start to see it here uh, I think the prices for the 12B4As are going to rise steadily over the next couple of years because other companies will also uh, will get very eager to use this tube uh, because once a company uses something another company starts to copy it so what is this SEPP? It means single-ended push-pull. So let's have a look at that. Do they do they tell anything about it? No, so far circuit, circuitry. Uh, they, they say a few things I have uh, looked through this thing. This is the website of the company. That This is what we are looking at. I will... Uh, uh, paste the link below the video but because there's no uh, schematics here let me just show you guys uh, something uh, single ended push pull so that's what they mentioned single ended push pull so here this is an example by made by Andrea Ciuffoli uh, and and this is how it looks like so basically we are seeing a push pull circuit uh, with one one side one half of the circuit this is just the signal part one half doing the push the other half doing the pull and you see this is where the input signal is coming through uh, an interstage transformer and is doing a phase splitting duty and as you see the, the one of the one half of the signal it goes to the grid of one tube one triode and the other half of the signal goes to the other and look, this is a super genius uh, circuit because here uh, it has a, a single ended to push pull level control inside. So basically, by varying this resistor from full value to zero, uh, you can adjust this circuit from being completely push pull to single ended push pull. So what does that mean? So, so being push-pull means that the grid here at, at, at one stage has to, be, uh, has to receive a, a negative voltage when the other receives the exact same voltage in a positive polarity. And when it receives the uh, polarity here in the uh, positive, then this swings to the negative. So they flip-flop, flip-flop, flip-flop. And when you can do the flip-flopping, that's when you have the push-pull operation. However, when we cut the input to zero, then this half of the circuit is not doing anything to the signal. So basically, it's just flip-flopping here on this stage and you are getting a single-ended output because the voltage will appear from here between uh, this capacitor and, gr and the ground but here there's no signal coming out and this is why it's single-ended push-pull because the output is single-ended and it's only one half of the circuit that's uh, putting out power the other half is doing nothing so basically what we see with, uh, with uh, this uh, Alnick uh, preamplifier it's a single-ended push-pull operation so it's something uh, resembling this circuit 
uh, but with this input is the grid is just uh, grounded there so so this part of the circuit is never getting any any uh, input so in my opinion uh, I have tried single-handed push-pull operation and uh, and I also did vary it between like single-handed like a, a, a complete pentode versus single-handed push-pull the exact same circuit similar as as, uh, as here Andrea Chufoli did and I can tell that when you run it in a, in a real push-pull then it sounds much better in every way compared to the single-handed push-pull and uh, it has many reasons one of them is that when you are using just the uh, single-handed part then you are wasting one half of the circuit and uh, this part is also uh, using up uh, your power supply so basically 50% of the power supply's uh, output is going to get wasted as heat and and uh, and the only uh, application where single ended uh, push pull makes sense so so when this circuit makes uh, really good sense is in a power amplifier because it allows you to use a push pull output transformer for single ended operation and and why on earth we would want to do that that's because there is like a million push pull output transformers made and and uh, and you can convert a push pull uh, gear to single ended gear by for example using uh, such circuitry and 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 you need to do that because you need to balance the current on both legs of the push pull output transformer you cannot use a push pull iron otherwise for regular single ended because there's no gap to allow it so anyway here we are talking about uh, a preamplifier so uh, it's not really clear to me why would anyone uh, want to go for single-handed push-pull instead of a proper uh, push-pull but uh, well it's uh, they, they know what they are doing probably uh, they, they must have some reasons but I'm afraid that here the marketing guys did their thingy uh, maybe I'm afraid that uh, here it, it's probably also a marketing trick so that they can call this a single-ended uh, preamplifier while it's not uh, true dual mono design that's a very nice thing and let's look at uh, at other details of this preamplifier in the next video to keep it short and compact so thank you guys for tuning in I hope everyone uh, like this little primer to OTL <laughs> preamplifiers. Uh, apparently, it's not a joke, but it's a real thing. And uh, and and there is a. This is this was the first thing I found for OTL preamp, and uh, I'm glad I found it. It's something very interesting. See you in the next video. Bye bye.